Hi friends, it's in the 70s and breezy and it is a perfect day to be spending time in the garden. We've been away for a couple days. We've been camping with friends and we got back two days ago. I've had time to water since we've been back but I haven't had time to harvest any of the things that have ripened since we've been gone. And I also haven't had time to check for pests. Just before we left on our vacation, I discovered that I definitely have a cabbage worm problem and I'm ready to start taking care of them today. So let's harvest some things and see how the cabbage worm problem is going. If you're new here, just for a little context, I have just moved to this property. Well, we moved in, oh, that lighting's much better. We moved in June and this is my childhood home and I'm happy to be here, but the summer is a weird time to move when you're trying to grow your own food. Um, fortunately, my parents planted a garden for us so that we would have some things to tend and harvest, but they were busy planting their own garden at their new house. So some of the things got into the ground later than they normally would here. And then we also planted a few things of our own when we arrived, just because there were things that I knew I wanted. So all that to say, the garden's in kind of an unusual season. Some of the things that are ripening now are things you'd normally think of harvesting earlier in my zone here in Pennsylvania. And um, that's just the reality of things. I've also planted some of my fall crops. So this whole garden's in transition, which seems about right. We are too, and I'm trying to learn to be flexible. Here's my row of tomatoes. The plants are really full, which I love. I think next year I will try uh, pruning them. It was kind of damp here a month ago, and so some of them did uh, hold moisture and suffer blight, but they're doing pretty well. Look at these guys. I had a lot of big ones ripen while we were gone. And I'll show you the kind this is. I didn't plant this one, so I didn't know off the top of my head. This is a brandy wine, and they are gorgeous. My daughter loves to harvest. She's with her grandparents right now. So I'm gonna pick some of these, but not all of them. I'm gonna leave a few on each plant because she would be devastated if she came home and there was nothing left to harvest. Look at that. It's a beast. I love it. We'll leave those for my little harvest helpers. Let's see what we've got going here. This one's a paste tomato. Let's see if I can give you a good view. There's the view. That's beautiful. I'm glad I'm getting out here today. Some of these have just fallen to the ground. They'll still be all right. Definitely didn't want to leave these for another day. Wow. I think I'm going to turn these tomatoes into a salsa, a roasted salsa. I haven't grown this many tomatoes before. I'm not used to getting en enough that I have to preserve them. So I'm still figuring out how my family uses these and what's the best way for us to store them. But we buy salsa every week. We are definitely salsa eaters. So if I could have a stash in the freezer or on my pantry shelf and we could be eating roasted salsa that was straight from the garden for the next couple months, that would feel pretty good. Over here, we've got a few of the black crim that are ripening. They're a really pretty color. They're darker than the others. These sun sugars are so sweet. If you like a snacking tomato, I definitely recommend them. I love the color on these. This is Midnight Snack. It starts out green and purple. And then as it ripens, let's see if I can show you. gets this kind of deep red on the bottom and keeps the purple on top. It's so pretty and it's another good tasty snacking tomato. Some of them ripen to just red. 
I wanna check on my peppers now. Their location's a little funny. I'm on a hill here. Everything's on a large hill. And so I've got some terraced landscape bedding that the peppers are on. And I kinda just have to climb out onto the terrace. Here, I'll give you a view to give you a sense of where they are. So in the midst of some of the flowers, I've got my peppers. Let's see if there's anything ready to harvest. This guy's definitely ready. This one's got a lot of peppers that are almost ready. I might pick, I think I'll pick these two and then I'll leave the rest for my daughter. I'm on the edge. This one's a chocolate cherry candy cane pepper. Kind of novel. You see it has these pretty stripes. Oh, this guy's getting some bugs in him. I should definitely pick him. Look at those stripes. I love those colors. We're gonna head on over to the raised beds now because I suspect there's some kale that's ready to be harvested. This bed is definitely in transition. I've got kale that has been here since the spring and it's pretty mature now. It probably should be pulled out. It's starting to get yellow and to be prone to worms. And then right next to the kale, I've got my butternut squash which I'm so excited about because I've never grown butternut squash before and we love butternut squash. We eat a lot of butternut squash soup in the fall and the winter. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how much I can get out of these plants and whether we can turn them into some weekly soup for our family. I think I'll turn this kale into kale chips. I might also try drying it in the oven and crumbling it. Uh, my mom did that recently and I found that I really liked using it in my breakfasts. <laughs> I hadn't often had kale for breakfast before, but I liked putting it in my scrambled eggs along with some feta and I felt really good about starting my day that way and uh, it was tasty. It goes nicely with feta. That's a pretty full harvest. I thought I'd pull off all the leaves, but I'm having trouble bringing myself to pull out plants that are still producing, even though I know they're past their prime. All right, it's time to check on those brassicas. Well, I'll show you along the way what else I'm growing for the fall. Here are my green beans. I grew a set of green beans here and fully harvested them and froze them. Uh, well, actually my mom froze them for me because I was overwhelmed maybe a month and a half ago. Uh, and now I've replanted this with my favorite kind of green bean, which is Baker Creek's Dragon Tongue. It is so tender and sweet. Um, you see my herbs are also doing pretty well right now. This is the basil that I harvested in a video a couple weeks ago and it has grown back in. I think I'll need to make some more pesto. Some of these I'm letting go to seed because my bees love them. This bed is an experiment. I'm just trying out several varieties to see what thrives in zone 6B and what my family likes to eat. So here on the right, I've got the 1500 year old cave bean from Baker Creek. And in the middle, I've got some Brussels sprouts, uh, which I bought as starts. And then over on the left, I've got golden beets. I've read that they're a bit sweeter than red beets and I like turning red beets into soup. So I'm eager to see what they taste like. That's another Baker Creek variety. These eight plants here are my broccoli. And then back here are my cabbage. My dad warned me that growing cabbage in this area is a battle with cabbage worms. Probably in any area, it's a battle with cabbage worms. And he was right. Last week, I discovered cabbage worms and I picked them off one by one 
and sprayed these plants with neem. Uh, now, you know, we've been away, as I said, for a couple days, and I want to see if the worms have come back. This plant's looking happy. I think that was old damage. So let's look at something that's a little more rough. <laughs> this guy's not thriving. Let's see if I can see any worms. I actually don't see anything right now. This might be old damage. Let me keep looking. I'll give you a close view. I've found a few here. There's this guy. They're so good at blending in on the underside of a leaf. He's pretty big. And then over here, I've got a little guy and I've got a cocoon. So I definitely need to pick these guys off. I'm pretty pleased though. I really thought I would find more worms. I think I have only two cabbage worms, which is really a victory. It means I'm gaining ground because I picked probably a dozen or more off of these plants before we left for vacation about a week ago. So I'm gonna go get some tweezers to pick off those two. <laughs> I'm just not ready to do it with my hands yet. Uh, and we'll take care of them. I'm picking these off with tweezers and then just dropping them into a bowl of soapy water. They'll drown in the soapy water and won't be my problem anymore. I'll be sure to spray the undersides of these leaves because that's where they tend to live. I'm using Captain Jack's neem oil. When I'm battling pests with neem, I usually apply it about twice a week. That can get a little time consuming. If you happen to be a parent of littles like I am, they love to do the spraying for you. This is a favorite chore of my kiddos. So I'll probably do this again in about four days or so, or one of them will, and hopefully that will help our problem. The final thing I'm gonna do in the garden today is something I've really been looking forward to. I'm here at my strawberry bed and I've been watching it put out runners all season. Um, earlier in the season, I've been tucking the runners back into the bed and they've been taking root and this has really filled out. But now I've just got so many that are spilling out over the edges and I do not want to waste them. They're all the way around. You can see some here and a bunch over here. And so I decided to buy a green stalk. It came in the mail two days ago and I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, I know it's just really well suited to strawberries because it allows them to hang. We had that problem, that perennial, perennial, <laughs> strawberry problem where the strawberries as they ripened on the soil tended to rot underneath from microorganisms and bugs and things so that when the top was beautifully ripe, the bottom was hollowed out by something. So I wanna get these planted, these little runners planted into something that will suspend the strawberries and see if we can get a better harvest that way. It is late, late, late in the season to be propagating strawberries, I know. I'm here in zone 6B. I'm less than two months from first frost, uh, but, I do have one maybe slightly unfair advantage. My family owns a retail nursery, and so I have access to a greenhouse about a mile from here. And so I'm gonna plant this green stalk and set it up 
on my patio and let those runners start taking root. And then as the weather gets too cold for it, I'm gonna carefully load it onto a truck and put it in the greenhouse. And hopefully that will give it the protection it needs to still thrive and survive over the winter and produce something next year. This is an experiment. It is late, it might not work, but let's give it a try. When you're cutting strawberry runners to propagate, you wanna look for nodules. So I'll show you right here. These little guys are just dying to become roots. So that's what you wanna focus on. That shows you that your runners are ready to become new strawberry plants standing on their own. I love that strawberries just want to propagate themselves. It's so cool to me that there are plants that just multiply and multiply almost without a lot of assistance from us. Um, and it just feels like an abundance. Uh, like I didn't have to buy more strawberry plants. They're just doubling themselves. So I'm gonna cut anything with these nodules and that will become my little transplants. I've got a box here that I've lined with damp paper towels to try to keep these sort of moist. And I bought a five tier green stock, so I need at least 30 of these. I've discovered an unexpected bonus. I've been feeling a little guilty as I saw these runners for the past month spilling out over the edge and knowing that it was time to do something with them, but I just didn't have time to make that happen. Anyhow, turns out some of them spilled over and have been sitting on the ground long enough that they've put down roots, which is even better than having nodules. So I'm going to carefully dig underneath these and see if I can preserve some of those root systems and those will get a really good start. Well, it's hard to preserve them, but these are definitely gonna have a better start than the ones that just have nodules. It's a bonus. There's another good one. Look at that. This one's really strong and off to a good start. I love that even though gardens require tending, sometimes they're also forgiving and they will thrive even when they've been neglected. I think I've got more than enough to fill out my green stock. So I'm gonna go get the planter and start assembling it. Green stock is running a sale right now on terracotta planters, which is what prompted me to buy. Uh, but I did not buy the base. Uh, they come, you can buy a wheeling base that allows you to rotate and move your green stock around to track sunlight. But I was watching the budget, so I skipped that part, which means I have to be sure to assemble this where I want it to stay, because it's gonna become pretty heavy by the time I've stacked all five tiers. I'm gonna start off with a pretty standard potting mix, and I'm also gonna add a little bit of Neptune's Harvest Crab and Lobster to add some dense nutrients for these little strawberries to start off.
the tiers are prepped with soil and with fertilizer and they're ready to be planted. So each pocket is just going to get one of these little guys and I intentionally left this piece on them so that when I plant them, since they have no root system, this can anchor them a little bit and hold them upright. I've got all five tiers planted. It is very bright out now and hot. I'm kind of fighting some of the weird shadows here, but hopefully you can see what's going on. I'm gonna start assembling all the tiers. I was going to put the green stalk on the front corner of the porch and now the light has changed and I see that that part's shaded at the late afternoon. So that far corner seems to be the right spot. Let's get it assembled. As you can see, each tier has a gray disc that sits on top of it that distributes water to that level uh, through the central watering system. As I'm assembling the tiers, I can see why the directions explicitly state to fill each tier to the very top with soil. As you can see, I filled close to the top but not flush with the top. And because of the way the tiers stack, the plants really need to be sitting flush with the top of each tier in order to access sunlight. My plants are a little bit buried under the tier above each plant. So if I were going to do this again, I would definitely make sure that I fill the soil to the very top. I also think if I were going to do this again with newly cut strawberry runners, I would actually assemble all the tiers and then plant the runners. I can see why the directions state to plant before assembling. If you had anything with a root system and any sort of bulk beneath it, it would just be messy and awkward to try to plant this after it's assembled. But because my plants had no root system, I actually think it would have helped me in the placement of each plant so that I could place it right towards the middle of each pod and see how it can access sunlight. All right, and for the last layer, I'll put on the watering reservoir. It's so bright out here. One of the benefits of a green stalk is the way that it waters plants. You water that reservoir up top and the internal system distributes water to each individual plant um, at, in the soil so that the plant reaches the roots first, which is ideal for any plant with roots. Um, however, mine don't have roots yet. So I'm gonna water with the reservoir, but I'm also gonna then set my hose to the rain function, which is really light and gentle, and I'm gonna gently water the top of each cell. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I start to see those root systems develop. Uh, otherwise, these plants won't get what they need.
Here's the finished product. We got a lot done today. Thanks for hanging out in the garden with me today. I feel caught up on some of my work now that we've gotten some things harvested and planted that green stock and took care of those cabbage worms. Please like and subscribe so I can see you next week. And until then, have a great week.